you know, money now is, it is, it has always been money's a, a Money makes the world go around. Hey, welcome back to another episode of the Growth and Scaling Podcast. I am your host, Todd Westra, and today I'm taking you on a journey through the world of PR. That's right, PR. It is something that is so overlooked in today's breadth of marketing opportunities. This company is fantastic. You're going to love Paul. He's got a great company that's been around since 2006, since the early days of internet marketing, and really has adapted his business to how you should be promoting your business online. What are ways to still seem relevant, to be searchable, to be findable? And when is the right time and place to do a press release? And I love how he bundles his press releases, how he, how he uses other resources along the way to make them stronger, more powerful, more impactful. But I'm telling you right now, if you're in the in the uh, position to grow and scale your business, this is a fantastic episode and a fantastic company to work with. Paul does a great job with what he does. If he didn't, he would be out of business. But he is not only in business, he's grown and scaled his operations to a significant scale to where he is helping lots of different companies, doing lots of different releases, lots of different work, and it is working for his clients. So. Listen up, enjoy this episode. I think you're gonna grab some nuggets of goodness out of this thing. His business journey has been interesting. It's been, it's been fascinating to hear about his growth and I think you're gonna really love this episode. We'll see you on the other side. Hey, welcome to another episode of the Growth and Scaling Podcast. Uh, I am, honestly, I'm really excited today because I love, love, love talking to other marketers. Marketers are all about growth and growth and scaling. And I love hearing how marketers have grown and scaled their business. So today we've got an awesome marketer. We've got a man named Paul Fitzgerald. Paul, give us a little intro. Who are you and who do you like to serve with your business? Well, I'm Paul Fitzgerald. Um, I guess you could say I'm uh, outgoing, enthusiastic, fun, uh, <laughs> sympathetic, uh, understanding, creative. I own Salt and Pepper Media Inc. Um, a very ambitious public relations marketing company that uh, works with clients, startups, a lot of startups right across the USA and Canada. And right. um, exciting journey. And um, uh, we, we hate average and uh, we're just different. We're edgy, but we're good, if you know what I'm trying to say. Yeah, we're not edgy, but good. Out there. All right, I like it. We're I edgy. like it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah, thank you. So what, what's with the name here? Salt and Pepper. Uh, there could be a hundred implications here. What are we talking about here? Sure. Um, people say, is it your hair? And I'm still happy to have hair, by the way, <laughs> uh, but it's not my hair. I was in a restaurant many years ago. Um, uh, I call myself, I used to be institutionalized. I had a job, uh, a nine to five job, which I started to hate. And then, but it was a public relations job for an institution. It yeah. was actually quite good, but there was nowhere for me to grow. Long story right. short, I had a couple of buddies who were going to open up a sushi restaurant. And uh, there's an Asian connection right there. We spoke earlier about traveling in Asia. So right, uh, he, right. And, you know, he hired a uh, professional public relations company uh, out of Toronto to write a press release. And he showed it to me. It was about two paragraphs and their contact information. And he's like, this doesn't seem right. And I, he goes, what can you do with it? So I looked to my left. I said, I'm going to put some salt and pepper on it. And <laughs> <laughs> so I took the press release uh, home that night um, after a couple cans of Sapporo and uh, sushi. <laughs> And, and um, I uh, I redid the press release. They made it about 500 words, some great quotes, yeah. told the story of why he opened it. And hence, I just stuck with the name Salt and Pepper Meeting from there. And that was back in 2006. I love it. I love it. Wow, 2006. Hey, I yeah. mean, seriously. Yeah, the time flies. Whew. So you started this as a teenager. And, uh, and during that time, you have probably been involved in a lot of different... So, so you specialize in PR work? Is this is this kind of the, the main focus of the company? Tell us about who you like to help and what, what problem do you solve? Sure, yeah. Um, the problem we solve is we help a lot of startups who are tight with, uh, uh, well, by the time they go to launch, as you know, a lot of startups, you know, they're spending money on patents, they're spending money on websites. And by the time they'll get to, say, myself or yourself or who any public relations right. company, there's always that kind of that cry out going, hey, we're, 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 we're bootstrapping the rest of this. You know, our investing investment money has run out. We really need your help. Yeah. So how I help a lot of, uh, right? You've Always, heard too, late. Always too late. Always too late. I hate that. 
right? <laughs> so what I do um, is I get a lot of startups in the mainstream press where they don't have to spend all that money in advertising. Now, I still gotcha. get some sponsored posts, right? The, for the footprint, I'll do the newswire and things like that. But I tell a story. So I, I get people, uh, you know, for example, I have a client in Iowa. It's a toffee company. I have a, a gentleman in Sacramento. He's got a smart trailer hitch that you roll your trailer and it hooks automatically and you don't need a spotter and a five year old could do it. So, you know, so these are a lot of, um, we're solving a problem with people being, um, of course, not sure on where to go to get the exposure. And right. of course, then how to, uh, how to, how to afford it. So we get people on morning talk shows in their local community and it oh, scales cool. out from there, you know, to have popular science and, you know, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like that. That's a, that's a very awesome problem to solve. I mean, I would dare say that probably 99% of all small business founders probably have no idea how to do any of that. A lot don't, right? And at the same time, I don't know how to do, how to do what they do. And, you know, right. <laughs> inventing a right. app or something. So it works out. Really it works out. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Thank you. So, so, so as I mean, honestly, though, 2006 to now, there's just been a couple of minor changes in marketing and messaging, right? Mm -hmm. A couple, yeah. I mean, the, the way we do it is a lot different. But yeah. What has been consistent in, in, the, in the time that you started to now, your ability to put salt and pepper on someone's messaging, what are some things that have stayed consistent and what are some things that have changed? The things that have stayed consistent, I think, is the media's uh, uh, need uh, to, to find really cool local stories and national stories. Right. Right. Uh, that's always been there. If you have a really good story to tell and you have a brand that's really cool, you're doing a first of its kind, something really unique that's going to benefit right. consumers and maybe change the world. That's always remained the same. I think what's changed, as you know, obviously is technology and with technology and with, uh, you know, a global recession with a pandemic and the list could go on right. and on. Uh, there's more and more, I'm finding more and more sponsored content, uh, whether that be TV or whether that interesting. Be, yeah. So there's a, you know, I think, I think there's a fine that the, the lines are kind of uh, blurred now more so than ever before uh, where, you know, you can, you know, you can give a publication or an, a TV outlet 10,000, do some advertising, and then you can appear on the morning show. So there's more packages now, or you can appear online. So that's interesting, right? If you have 10 grand, you can be in Forbes or you can be in, in other publications. I mean, you know, money yeah. now is, it is, it's always been money's a, uh, money makes the world go around. And uh, so a lot of dynamics have changed with technology and with how we get people in the media. Back in the day, I mean, we, we, we advertised, don't get me wrong, it was advertising. Yeah. But, but, but the amount of sponsor content linked with advertising or just money for sponsor contact, content has just skyrocketed. So, so in your opinion, I'm, I'm asking this out of pure curiosity. I mean, what, what is the typical, um, when we see someone as like a guest on a show or a, or someone who's a contributor or something like that, what, what level of that is, Hey, we just want to get this person on versus they're paying to be on. Sure. I, absolutely. I think, um, I think when, you know, you, I guess to, to differentiate it, obviously, I think when you, you know, see someone who, uh, for example, uh, there, there was a, a gentleman I work with, he's an engineer in, in Mars, Florida, and uh, he, uh, they helped with the robotic for a woman's arm. She lost her arm, a little girl lost her arm from being bitten by a shark. So obviously... Whoa. The, the news network's going to want to interview or learn more about this robotic arm and how it works and right. of course highlight the company that that helped you know uh, did that change her life you know uh, and help her start living life again obviously so i think right. you have the wow stories those are naturally going to be free you know they're going to have you on right. book a date to go on um it's like kind of like the consumer electronics show where they have you know a robot you ask it questions and at the end, it might say something really weird and boom, that blows up and there's coverage and that's free. I mean, obviously, um, but right. when, you, when you see someone going on a, a morning talk show, say for example, um, top tip, top 10 makeup tips for uh, winter, how to take care of your skin, you know, right. You know, and then you've got the beauty company listed below. So, and usually you'll know as well when you see sponsor because sponsor will be listed somewhere. Right. And even when they post on the website, they'll have the regular content and they'll have their sponsor content. So there's ways around that. And by the way, really quick, Interesting. Talk, prices can range from 2,500 bucks 
from say CTV in Vancouver, uh, they right twenty five hundred bucks to uh, uh, Cincinnati ABC affiliate that's fifteen hundred bucks. So it ranges and it goes all the so way. So it's not horrible. No, it's certainly not. It's certainly not. Huh. And I always tell people if you need that extra push, you know, do the newswire and and put out a little money where you can get on a couple networks because you're on Google forever. And really quickly, yeah. isn't that the first thing? It's like. Uh, dating, it's like, you know, before you, you, know, you, you marry, you meet a friend or whatever, you Google them. And I tell you, if you're not sure. on Google, it could be a mom pa blog, it could be ABC, it could be anything. The more traction you have, the more people will buy and it validates who you are. Hey there, friends. This is Todd. Running a business, honestly, can leave a lot of founders and operators feeling lonely and isolated. If you have ever felt that way, trust me, I know what it feels like. And there is something you can do about it. You've heard a lot of our guests talk about the fact that being lonely and isolated is one of their biggest challenges in trying to run and scale their business. CaptainsCouncil.com. Go to CaptainsCouncil.com right now and see what we're doing to resolve this problem. We want you to be a strong operator who has solutions and has a way to get around the challenges you're currently facing. What most founders don't understand is that you're not alone. The challenges that you're facing, likely somebody else has already overcome and they can give you the feedback you need to overcome them. Who better than your peers, other founders, other operators who are joining with you in a small group setting, a global community setting, as well as that are in-person events to guide you through these challenges that you're facing right now. Don't give up, keep on pushing, but do it with some good advice from your peers. Go check it out at captainscouncil.com and let me know what you think about the offering. We can't wait to see you there. 120%. I mean, that is, that is such a valid point. And, and, you know, I love companies like you that are able to take and, and help these businesses to kind of get out there. I mean, so many people don't understand the value of what pulls up when you're Googled, you know, right. You can control it. Or you can let the the internet take control of whatever they find. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. And I think, uh, Todd, uh, during when the pandemic hit, I think a lot of people closed up bricks and mortar and they finally realized, and I was always trying to tell my clients over the years and years and years, it doesn't matter where you appear, you're on Google, someone's talking about you. And I think right. people finally got that when the pandemic hit because they started to see how it was all working. They left the office, they got home, they're online going, oh, I see now. Right. You know, I love it. But back in the day, if I didn't get a client on CNN or the New York Times, you know, uh, know, termination of contract notice would come through my email. I (laughs) experienced that, you know, we all have. But yeah, live and learn. Yeah. Yeah. Well, listen, that's a great business model. And now that we know about what you do, tell us about your business. I mean, 2006 to now, most (laughs) businesses don't last a year, let alone as long as you've been around 17 years now. Yeah. How, how has your business evolved and what are some highlights along your growth journey that you feel like were just awesome pieces that helped you grow and scale? Yeah. Well, first, my mother, my mother never raised a quitter. Uh, and that's, that's, awesome. that's the first and foremost thing. I think my yeah. philosophy has been from day one. And I, like I said, I was a reporter at a big university in Canada. And I had a lot of uh, networks in the U.S. with the Canadian University. So long story short, sure. uh, when I started my business... Um, I followed my my motto, which I still follow today. Um, the small things can end up being absolutely huge things. Really quickly, I met a dentist when I was just I couldn't go up any higher in the university I was working at. I had, it was a great job. Yeah. Um, but this dentist came to me and said, "I invented this mouth guard. It aligns your jaw. You have to get fitted for it. It was very expensive. It was like yeah. two grand." Uh, he had a network of over three hundred dentists across the USA and Canada. So he said, "I want to hire you. So you do my PR, and all the dentists you get as clients." Right. So I was like, wow, this is a big gig. So I jumped. I left my There's job. There's a lot more than 300, right? Right. <laughs> yeah. So um, anyhow, um, I put out our second press release. We tried a couple press. I put out the first, the second press release and um, I put it out on the wire and I sent it to a few contact lists I had. Sure enough, I got an email from the editor of this engineering uh, new e- email newsletter that had 312 subscribers. And he says, I really want uh-huh. to interview this dentist. This mouth guard sounds fantastic. So I contacted the dentist who had yeah. done this mouth guard and I said, you got to do this interview. He doesn't just want to run the press release. And anyhow, we got into an argument. It was 
turned out okay, but he wanted to fire me because they had 312 subscribers. I said, just do the interview. Trust me, it yeah. it's adds up. The small things add up. So he did right. the, right, reluctantly right. he did it. So sure enough, a few days later, it was a ma- Saturday afternoon, I got an email and it was uh, one of those subscribers who was the editor of the Boston Globe, the sports editor. <laughs> and he says, I want to try this mouth guard and I want Manny Ramirez to get fitted. And if it works, Shut up. you'll go on the front page of the sports section and it all happened. And from there, we fitted Shaq O'Neal. We went to the LA Times. We were a popular site. We were everywhere. So, oh my God. Yeah, so in saying from now there until now, I tell every client that it's even like we're, what we're doing right now. It could be that one person who owns an right. oil company says, Paul, here's a $10 million car. I, 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 I'm not expecting that, but you don't know. Totally. Every I expect it. Exactly. Exactly. Right. <laughs> So it's kind of like the police. They played the Alma Combo years and years and years ago in Toronto in front of seven people. They almost canceled the gig. And Sting said, no, at least we're going to have a really good rehearsal. But two of those guys in the, of those seven were from A&M Records. Are you going, kidding me? No, no, not at all. And they played the Alma Combo in Toronto. They got signed to a Hubba Bubba commercial. And then they came out with their Regatta de Blanc, their first album. Yeah. So you're kidding me. You don't know. I'm not. No, you can. It's a true story. I did not know that story. I'm a huge police fan. I did not know that story. Me too. Me too. I'm huge. Yeah. So take, I mean, treat everything like it's big. If it's small, but appreciate it, embrace it, enjoy it and grow because you don't know where things can go. You don't, you don't know where they can go. I love it. Yeah. That, my friends, is some incredible advice for anyone trying to grow and scale. You never know what's going to evolve out of the little things because, I mean, even these interviews, I I find that uh, this podcast has been such a blessing to me, not because of of the mass quantity of listeners, but the networking that's taking place. You know, that it's the little things that, that just happen. I've introduced guests to other guests and I've introduced, you know, products to each other and, and things happen. And, no. and it's just out of these little 30 minute interview breaks right? that turn into something amazing for each other. Yep. That's awesome. Yeah. And Elon Musk could be watching this and he might say, hey, you guys will make a great talk, Todd and Paul. You want to talk show out of Cal? You don't know. <laughs> right? Hey, you know, I bet he is watching right now. I know. We're, <laughs> we're going we're gonna to tag him in the interview just to Sounds see. Sounds good. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> Well, so so as you've grown, though, over the years, I mean, obviously, a lot of people think of the marketing agency route as kind of a stepping stone into some other business model. What's kind of kept you going? What what, what are the things about what you do that you just kind of you kind of love? I, I mean, it, well, a lot I'm, of people love their business at first and then they learn to hate it. But what well, do you still love about it? I like baseball, I like football, I like touchdowns, I like home runs. So when I represent a client, it's, it's, it's like, yeah, I got them on the evening news. Yes. I got them on the front page of the Iowa state newspaper or in the Sacramento B or in page 22 of the LA times and they're online and people can find them. You know, um, I right. really, I'm, I'm, I'm very passionate with what I do. I love what I do. Um, and, uh, I'll tell you, you know, I've done this broke. I've done this, uh, with a good budget. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, I, I, I just, I love new ideas. I love people. I see the good in people. I've been burned a lot. I blocked that out. I yeah. treat each yeah. person the way I want to be treated, but I'm really fascinated because, you know, this turns into me going to conferences, hopping on a plane, getting off in Chicago, yeah. or going to LA and, and just doing stuff. And I feel like I'm alive. I don't feel institutionalized. Yeah. I really, you know, and I don't feel like, oh, I got to go back to the office tomorrow. You know, I, now I, I work from home. We've got field offices and all that, but totally, it's exciting. I'm always on the move and I'm always using, I'm always thinking. And the harder I, I work, it. the better I feel. And the more people I'm working with, I feel fantastic. It's, 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 it's euphoric, really. I can't describe it. I love it. it. Hmm. I love it. And, and for those listening again, like this is a perfect example of, if your business is not doing this for you, <laughs> chances are you're not gonna last long in what you're doing. Right. So learn to love it or learn to move on to something that you do love because not every business needs to be your lifelong business. Yeah. You know, you, you've you been lucky that you're still so passionate about what you're doing, but a lot of people out there are listening to this thinking, okay, um, I, I'm five, six years into this business and I've about had it, you know, how do I get out of this thing? Sure. And, and you're looking at it going, this is a great lifestyle. This is a great business. I love my clients. 
Yeah. We're making, we're getting people into those pages. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's a good feeling. Now, now tell us about the flip side. What, what has been the biggest challenges that you've had to face in, in your growth and scaling journey? Um, oh yeah, that's interesting. I'm, I've got a big heart. I'm a trustworthy guy. So, um, uh, let's just say I haven't uh, been paid all the time. Uh, I've had some big <laughs> contracts go south and, you know, you think you're going to get paid and you don't, you think 40,000 is coming through a, a wire transfer to the bank and you're, yes. you know, and it's never coming. Um, uh, <laughs> um, clients who don't pay, like I said, I move on, I block all the, I, I, I get a lobotomy done once a month, right? Uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. But, uh, you know, I, I think uh, the, the, the biggest difficulty in, is and it's like with any business is you can get ripped off you can get taken advantage of yeah. and sometimes yep. people take your niceness as a weakness um yeah and, and but um but it's like anything it's like relationship it's like friendships it's uh you you know the flags you listen to uh, what did oprah say listen to the whispers you know uh um, right. you know and you know always go with your gut um my like i said my biggest difficulty has been not scaling. I've had a great time scaling. In fact, yeah. I'm scaling now successfully. I have got a great team of people who are, I, I found awesome. a devoted team who want to work from home, who want to work on a boat in the Bahamas or from Florida on the beach. And I love you know, it. they understand, they get it. And they, they get the whole communications thing and they love it. But um, in terms of my biggest challenges I've, I've experienced in the past is getting paid. So now I ask for deposits yeah. and, and, and I know, yeah. I know how to work with people who maybe it's a thousand a month for a PR package, not right. 3,500. Right. So you just kind of right. work things out and maneuver, uh, set your sails the way the wind's going, so to speak. I love it. I love yeah. it. That's some really great advice. I, I, I honestly, I think that's, that's some of the best advice because a lot of people go into business, not thinking that people aren't going to pay them. And, uh, right. and you and I have both been in business long enough to know that, you know, it doesn't matter. Like you almost, ne you could have the best contract in the world and, and good luck collecting. Like there's always some way that they can get around paying you. And it's like, is it worth the effort for me to chase this 40 grand or do I just, you'll never see move it. on. Yeah. You'll, you'll, <laughs> and you know what? Use your positive, positive energy to pick up the new clients, to make up the difference for that. And you know, Agreed. and be a good person. And I, and I never have it reflective if I'm having a bad day or whatever, I never re right. re reflect that or put that on anybody else. I, I, again, I put it behind me, I move forward. Now yeah. years ago, yeah, I would call a lawyer, I get a collections company and be like, oh yeah, I'm gonna get my money sure. back. And, and you, you live and learn, sure. so that's all. Sure. Yeah. Now it, it definitely is a, a frustrating thing to deal with, um, you know, I, I'd say that's probably one of the biggest hidden secrets of, of small business ownership is, is the fact that not everyone's going to pay you mm -hmm. and you could have the best relationship up front. They've got an amazing business and they just screw you. Yep. Yeah. And be careful of the flashy cars and the big mansions. Uh, I, you know, especially and, those guys, <laughs> you're right. Not all of them, but you know, uh, once people start talking about the cars and they're worried about what they're wearing and what they're driving, then that's using my first, my first flag uh, to be I love it. transparent. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Well, listen, how, how, um, you know, in, in all these years of business, are, th are there people in your, in your world, in your network that you look to and just, they kind of keep you motivated. They inspire you just keep on innovating and doing what you're doing. Absolutely. I'd love to give a shout out to somebody in there. Yeah. One shout I'd like to give is uh, Fred Carey at Ideal Pros in San Diego. Uh, Fred represents a lot of new inventors uh, uh, in cool. uh, home lifestyle apps, uh, you name it. Uh, he helps you take your product, your idea from concept to launch. He's very good Love at it. it. He'll help you everything. His team will help you over the patenting, uh, website, cool. press, and they have me on board to help out with some of their press stuff, which is an honor. And um, I've had the chance. That's to awesome. Work. Yeah, I've had the chance to work with Fred. He's a calm gentleman. He's been there, done it, seen it as well. And he's always huh. taught me how to scale. Uh, don't try and do everything cool. yourself. Hire experts in different areas that you can rely yeah. on and you'll get a better yeah. night's sleep. He's just a, a good, honest man. I've, I'm, I'm proud to be working with him. And we're putting out an announcement quite soon on some uh, big launches we're doing. So which I'm really uh, happy and proud to be part of the team. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Love it. That's awesome. I love shout outs like that. And I, I hope that, that he appreciates you shouting him out. This is a, this is an opportunity to really, it's a feel good. And, and I think that those listening, 
never skip on a moment or an opportunity to help someone around you. I, I have, I know that just in talking to you, um, you're the type of guy that, that is likely out there mentoring and helping clients, helping vendors, helping people around you to grow and scale their businesses. And, you know, it doesn't always come back the way you think it will come back. But I can't tell you how often I have been repaid in some other way by giving and reaching out to others who are who are behind me, trying to trying to get to where I'm at in this point. In the journey. I, I could not agree with you more. And, uh, you know, I think when we are this way, we're blessed. Uh, uh, we're humble and uh, we're working to make the world a better place. It's never going to be perfect. Love it. And, um, Love it. you know, just follow your heart, your soul and your beliefs and keep your head up. Fantastic. Well, listen, I'm excited to uh, to get this out in the public. Where do people get a hold of you if they want to follow you? Are you are you on any specific platform in particular or, or are yeah. you all over the place? Yeah, well, we're on uh, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, uh, YouTube. But you awesome. can, you know, if you just go to salt and pepper media Inc. Dot com, Cool. Uh, that's that's our URL. We have got our social media handles uh, at the bottom at the top. So awesome. uh, widgets that is so you can. And there's a contact form if anybody wants to contact me. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. We're going to tag Elon in this and we'll see where it goes, buddy. <laughs> I can't wait. I, and I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Todd. Thank you. Hey, thanks for being on. Okay. Appreciate it. Take care. Thank you. Okay. So what did you think of that? Are press releases on your future? Click below. Paul's got a link to his, his company. You can check him out. You can see what kind of work they do, what kind of companies they work with. My guess is that if you've been in business more than a month, and you haven't done a press release, you need to. If you've been in business for 10 years and you haven't done one in the last two years, now is the time to do a press release. It is such an easy thing to do to bring relevance to Google and bring awareness to your company. I highly recommend you do this. Anyone in the growth journey right now thinking about what else do I need to be doing for my company, this is what you need to do. Talk to Paul, he's a great guy. You're gonna love working with him. And for those of you that know someone that needs to hear this episode, I highly suggest you, you like, subscribe, send this on to those around you who need to hear it, and let's build businesses together. Thanks so much for being involved in the Growth and Scaling podcast. We hope we've been able to help you along your journey to growth and scaling.